Can we mute ourselves, Kanita, while others are talking? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala warakatuh. And a very good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us via our Facebook Live. I'm Juananita, the president and founder of Miasa. Welcome back to our next series for our Unlock Your Story campaign. As usual, I'm truly looking forward for today's session, getting up close and personal with our panelists with today's topic, the recovery journey in mental health, the celebrity edition. So hashtag unlock your story. So bersama kita pada hari ini, kita ada Cik Puan Salima Ibrahim, kita ada Carl Shafiq dan juga Jana Nick. Apa khabar semua? Alhamdulillah, good morning. Assalamualaikum. Oh, baik. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much guys for joining us today for spending, you know, Saturday morning. Uh, hujan lebat dekat sini. Um, so very, very happy, very, very humbled and excited to have these three uh, celebrities with us today. So hari ni sebenarnya um, buat makluman semua, kita punya um, sesi adalah sesi santai. So ini adalah sebuah sesi perkongsian. Kalau ada apa-apa soalan sepanjang um, sesi ini, boleh uh, you can include it in our comment section on the Facebook Live, insyaAllah. Okay, so uh, kepada anda yang baru ya mengikuti Miasa ataupun belum tahu tentang kempen ini, um, I would like to share a little bit. So the campaign is hashtag unlock your story. And ini sebenarnya adalah salah satu cara untuk kita menormalisasikan uh, perbincangan tentang kesihatan mental because we all know there is a lot of shame, there's a lot of fear attached to mental health and especially mm -hmm. mental health conditions. Kan? Um, so we want to be able as much as possible to create awareness and how better okay, to create awareness if it's not via public figures. So hopefully through today's session dengan perkongsian Cik Puan Sarima, Kal Shafiq dan juga Jana Nik, uh, anda semua tak rasa keseorangan but we're not alone anyway in the first place. Dan kemudiannya kita dapat orang kata reach out for the help if needed and hopefully lead to increase help seeking behavior. Jadi ini adalah objektif ya um, perbincangan kita hari ini dan juga untuk reduce stigma. Jadi kepada anda yang berminat untuk join campaign Unlock Your Story ini, um, you can email us, okay, three ways. You can email your video, you can email your audio or your story in uh, not more than 400 words. Video dengan audio tidak lebih uh, empat minit. And we will um, share it across our social media insyaAllah. Okay, jadi sebelum uh, kita mulakan ni, uh, I just want to say a little bit more. Um, storytelling is actually a very powerful tool to convey messages and especially what more doing it via social media. So it gives, you know, a very transformative power. Sarima, kita tahu kita suka TED Talks and yeah. that is why TED Talks is very, very powerful kan? Uh, yeah. So but it's real experiences and it provides extraordinary hope and inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always say this where we never know which story provides that key to unlock our struggles. So kita tak tahu mungkin kisah Carl, mungkin kisah Jana, ataupun mungkin kisah Che Salima, Che Puan Salima Ibrahim insyaAllah. Okay, so kita akan mulakan lima pusingan ya hari ni everyone. So for the first round. Macam nak buat Muay Thai ke apa ni? Uh, tak boleh kita santai je. Uh, uh, santai tapi structured insyaAllah. <laughs> Okay, uh, Chief Wan, I know that, you know, recently you've been involved in a lot of, um, you know, awareness talks, you've shared a lot, uh, you've been very courageous in sharing your own story and also struggles. And because of that, at Miasa, you know, very, very happy to have you as our patron. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. Thank you. So wanted to check on, um, check up on you. Um, how are you? And maybe if you can share a little bit on your thoughts uh, about this campaign as well. And how have been? How have you been spending time during this MCO 3.0? Well, thanks. Good morning, um, Puan Anita and everyone who's here, to Jana and to Carl and all the viewers. Um, thanks for joining us. That's senang ya. Bangun pagi Sabtu and you want to like have a light in, but still kita cuba ya. Um, basically, I think it's great this Unlock Your Story campaign is running because. Prior to this, a lot of people are like, well, you know, malu, I don't know where to share my story. Takut kalau share, nanti orang kecam. Or I don't feel right sharing. Macam malu is, is the is the key word and, and feeling confused. So what I love about Unlock Your Story is that we get to hear other people when you struggle. And then 
other people punya hope stories too you know the things that they do to get through it and recently reading about the story that was up on Miasa about the lady who um, struggled with looking for the right medication Uh, yes. Now, a lot of people think that if they just go to a, a psychiatrist or a doctor, they can just get like one type of medication and then bam, habis. That's the, the magic pill we out. say. And so it is not like Panadol. It's not like a painkiller. Dia tak ada macam dua jenis and then it's either that or this, senang, habis. Because every human being is so unique. And through Unlock Your Story, I learned about this lady who's, you know, she's so different to me, different to you, different to Jana, different to all the viewers. So one medication that would work for me would not work for you pananita would not work for jana so dia macam kita kena menyesuaikan diri and i learned a lot about that because when i was going through my postnatal depression and i had to take medication i was so scared i was like no you know i'm not going to be one of them lah konon like what does that mean what, am i have i lost my mind again and then the doctors they explained it to me simply they said okay sorry ma macam ni if you had diabetes right now and you were really suffering and we needed to help you with your blood sugar level we would give you medication and you would take it right and i was like yeah i would so this is no different okay. and i was like yeah but what if it's the wrong type of medication and it makes my personality weird or i become like quiet what would the world do <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like no sir it won't most likely it will actually help you to be the original you so i was really happy with that because that gave me insight and um reading about the lady on unlock your story i was really happy to read that she shared her journey and how hard it is to find the right medication so sharing these stories is it, it's, it's only beneficial and there's nothing to yes. be mindful about oh, um, i agree and and i feel like mco right now this is the third round for us i feel like you know what people are feeling trapped people are feeling scared and the problem with that is when people feel scared and trapped they project their anger towards their loved ones or towards public figures or towards whoever because they don't know how to cope with the anger and confusion so during MCO what I've been trying to do is try to educate people as the patron of Miasa do as many talks as I can help as many people I get up to 200 private messages a day from people from all walks of life like muda to what different status some are VIP some are students like you know I'm suffering got sorry my you know I I think I'm losing my mind so I always try to redirect them towards help them and i spend time with my daughter and my husband and i do a lot of exercise so i know sometimes lari bertempat you know like i'd be watching netflix i'd be like running on the spot watching like mandalorian or whatever like on disney and i'll be like you know whatever you need to do you do it you know sometimes you know just having a cup of coffee that you like you know can cheer you up you do what works for you small small things sometimes So I've been spending MCO like that, you know, um mm-hmm. trying to keep the pace and stay focused. You know, this will pass. Nothing will last, the good or the bad. I always say so we will get through this together inshallah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarma. Yeah, I think that um a lot of people are feeling, you know, anxious, uh panic trapped. It's like never ending gun this lockdown and then now with the rocketing number of covid many people dying so it creates a lot of um you know panic yeah. and people feel trapped yes uh but i do also feel just from the feedbacks that we've gotten that a lot of people know better how to deal with it as well yes. um so alhamdulillah so a lot of people i mean as human beings we are all resilient uh tetapi of course people that are going through mental health struggles they do find it more challenging and also based on data we've seen that sebelum ni orang yang tak ada isu kesihatan mental they are too impacted um, jadi ini yang sedang berlaku sekarang ni um, so now even the normal people get a glimpse of mental health struggles mm-hmm. uh, which is a good thing as well so now we're able to talk about this in a big way openly yeah ada hikmah jugaklah ada hikmah dia the silver lining kan alhamdulillah thank you thank you so much uh, chip one okay carl how are you So Alanya uh, Karl macam mana sekarang how have you been coping during this MCO? Assalamualaikum selamat pagi semua. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi. Um alhamdulillah no, nasib baiklah ni MCO dah kali ketiga dah. So yes um kita dah sebenarnya dah get used to it. Um sebenarnya saya banyak buat um, I mean uh, belajar sesuatu from the last MCO. 
dan um, apa? <coughs> um, apa yang saya buat um, macam okey lah of course sebelum ni uh, kalau bila cerita pasal MCO je saya akan selalu rasa macam um, uh, anxiety rasa macam orang okay. kata apa um, um, stress lah dengan dengan situation kita kena lockdown dan sebagainya tak boleh keluar and all uh, tapi sebenarnya banyak benda yang kita boleh channel kan uh, untuk kita buat dekat rumah uh, basically macam macam I, I suka buat gardening, so I buat oh, escaping, so benda tu ambil masa yang lama untuk kita buat dan dia akan um, you know um, um, mengasyikkan. Okay. So yes, um, part of that, um, other than that saya jaga kucing lah. I have 16. So dekat What? Rumah. Masya Allah, this is true pet therapy. 16 Carl? 16 cats. <laughs> Carl mute, Carl on mute. The cat lah tu. <laughs> Sampai mana tadi? Sorry. Boleh, boleh. Cats. 16 cat, 16 cat. Ah, saya ada 16 kucing. So hari-hari saya uh, ambil masa untuk you know um, menjaga kucing saya. Yalah. Um, itu pun mengasyikkan juga sebab kita tak sedar apa yang kita, I mean, uh, timing berjalan dan, yeah. dan membuatkan kita distract yeah. from apa yang sepatutnya kita uh, fikir yeah. yang bukan-bukan dan sebagainya lah. Dan selain daripada itu, saya suka masak juga kat rumah. So kadang-kadang walaupun saya duduk berdua, bertiga je, tapi saya masak banyak. Saya so, selalu akan macam tengah hari masak, saya, saya repeat makan. Tapi Alhamdulillah lah, nasib baik tak, tak naik sangat kan? Naik tu ya. naik, tapi taklah. <laughs> Badan yang yang besar sangat lah. Ya. Sado lah orang kata, sado je. Sado is okay. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Carl. I think it also um, allows us to be more creative, kan sebenarnya uh, dalam masa MCO ni. Dan kita dapat berbuat benda-benda yang dulu tak ada time. So sekarang kita ada quality time to really spend and invest on other okay. things. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Carl. Okay, Jana, apa khabar? How have you been doing during this MCO? Macam mana? Um, Jana sibuk buat apa sekarang? Hello semua. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Uh, sekarang kita baru je stop shooting yep. sebab uh, MCO lah kan. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> saya sebenarnya dalam proses yang tadi tu lah yang Cik Puan Sarimah cakap tu. Dalam proses mencari ubat yang sesuai. Mm. So uh. dah ubat yang ke keempat, dah keempat kali tukar. So masih lagi belum sesuai. <coughs> Sebab dia mungkin satu yang masalah bila kita kena kerja juga kan. So, Betul. Kerja kita memerlukan uh, emosi. Ha. <laughs> ha. Yang ha. masalah pasal kerja saya ni adalah saya sebagai seorang pelakon, saya memerlukan emosi yang sangat-sangat maksimum. Yep. Uh, contoh kalau kalau sedih tu kena sedih betul-betul. Kalau marah tu kena marah betul-betul. Tapi bila kita ambil ubat, Ubat ni buat kita relax. Yep. Hmm. So memang saya ada masalah dengan ubat-ubat saya. Sebab kerja. Tapi saya akui yang sebenarnya bila ambil ubat ni sangatlah membantu saya. Betul. Uh, kita punya pemikiran kita. Uh, kita boleh rasa bezanya, oh sebenarnya aku ni perlukan ubat je. Uh, memang kita perlu sangat ubat. Tapi untuk kerja macam aku tak boleh makan ubat. So saya masih dalam, dalam proses mencari-cari dan masih lagi saya belum betul-betul get over it macam tak boleh masih masih lagi dalam proses berjuang untuk diri sendiri. So huh? Huh? tengoklah macam mana. It's not easy <laughs> Jana kalau you nak berlakon. I mean I I used to act as well and berlakon without medication is hard enough but dengan penambahan tu I don't think you you have a problem with the ubat. The ubat has a problem with your job. Uh-huh. <laughs> itu masalah dia. Betul, betul. Dengan nak ambil ubat pun ambil masa untuk you know for it to It work does. on you as well. Um, so uh. you need to schedule it properly kan daripada segi you know kalau bagi mengantuk kena ambil lebih awal supaya besok boleh fokus dengan baik dan sebagainya. So lebih kepada uh, planning ahead lah kan jana sebenarnya. Hmm. Betul sebab ubat tu ah dia tadi aku buat kita mengantuk ada yang ada yang mengantuk ada yang tak mengantuk ada yang akan buat pening satu hari sampai betul. tak boleh bangun. Hmm. Betul. So saya memang tengah masih mencari-cari lagi apa yang sesuai dengan kerja saya. So untuk uh, viewers-viewers hari ni kalau 
kalau mungkin ada yang masih dalam uh, orang kata, uh, mungkin saya boleh mewakili perasaan anda yang masih lagi confused dan masih lagi uh, be- bo- belum boleh uh, lawan dengan penyakit ni sendiri yang macam ish uh, bila saya masa first time ke, uh, uh, doktor bagi tahu yang saya ada bipolar saya macam eh ya ke aja tu macam mm-hmm. sampai sekarang pun macam Eh aku ni baik pula eh. sebenarnya macam tu masih, masih macam tak boleh terima kenyataan nah, Itu ayat dia macam tak boleh terima kenyataan mm-hmm. yeah. so, Sampai think... sekarang pun macam yeah. Sebab kita dah sengit Tapi tapi memang betul Memang betul Jumpalah doktor Siapa-siapa yang ada rasa betul. Benda ni Sebab kalau you rasa Problem tu datang dari you Sebab kita sebenarnya kita menyusahkan orang sekeliling kita Bukan menyusahkan Kita buat dia orang rasa tak best dengan kita sebenarnya, kita lah problem tu Faham uh-huh. so, um. tapi, tapi orang selalu fikir, oh Kenapa aku bodoh, kenapa aku ni, kenapa aku ni Kena-kena, Kita salahkan diri kita sampai kita rasa macam, oh aku tak patut pada dekat dunia ni uh-huh. Tapi yang sebenarnya, the problem is in our brain Kan macam uh, we have a chemical imbalance Yang kita tak tahu sebenarnya Penyakit mental ni memang betul-betul wujud Sama macam penyakit lain, macam demam yeah. Macam 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 kanser but you you, you perlu ubat. So bila you dapat you makan ubat baru you rasa eh beza eh beza eh? Uh, kepala aku fikir ah uh, macam tu. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much um Jana. I think this is such a, a good um, sharing from you as well. Yeah. Uh dan you know Jana seperti saya katakan sebelum kita mula tadi kan Jana I you know It's so brave of you and it's so courageous of you, especially being a public figure, kan, um, Cik Puan Sarima dengan Carl, to actually come out at this phase, phase pertama kita struggle dengan penyakit mental ni. Sebab saya dulu, Jana, masa 8 tahun dulu when I was struggling, jangan cakap nak cakap, nak keluar rumah takut, duduk rumah seorang pun takut, nak berfungsi pun tak boleh, takut, panik, nak bernafas pun susah. And nak bayangkan, bernafas pun susah. Betul. Dan nak berlakon, I don't know how you doing it, Jana. Exactly. I, really, I hope you can rest because ubat dia susah nak, nak, nak you know, you can, how you going to see the effectiveness kalau you tak relax. Because kalau you kena buat emosi yang sangat extreme, like as a pelakon, um, the ubat is supposed to help you balance your emotions. So, kalau you paksa diri you terlalu sedih, terlalu marah, it's like, you know, it's going contra to the medication. So, that's really tough for you. But Sarima, to be fair as well, um, you know, production, you know, things have to go on, of kan? Course. Uh, of course. That's the thing. Jadi, But you have to put your health first, I feel. That's betul, something betul. That, that, you know, um, you know, life has to go on. But, you know, if Jana, if you're struggling, you, you've got to put your health first. And, Definitely. And inshallah, if production stop like now, this is the yes. time to, to get to know yourself. Yes, and to get the the help and the treatment, and we also have to realize that the treatment needs to be holistic. Kan dia tak boleh yes. masukkan ubat, ubat je, tapi jana tak lihat, tak tidur, tak makan dengan betul. Um, you know, you don't exercise, you don't take care of yourself, you don't do things that you like. So it has to be a holistic approach to your recovery. So inshallah, you know, it will get better for you. Kita doakan sama-sama. Terima kasih, jana. Insya Allah. Anyway, I salute dekat Jana okay. tau sebab okay, uh, ni I ambil masa almost a year untuk dapatkan oh, ubat, the right ubat for me yang sesuai yang mana um, yang kiranya tak, tak kira sesuai lah maksudnya tak tak membuatkan I because we are in the creative team so of course bila kita ada ubat tertentu yang kita makan kita akan membuatkan rasa macam slow Best, you know, kan? rasa macam yeah, very tak produktif right. so I talk to my doctor Good. So, I cakap ubat ni tak sesuai dengan I, ubat ni tak sesuai dengan I. So, keep on um, try and error bagi ubat ni, bagi ubat ni. Sampai ada satu masa yang 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 uh, I feel better. So, dengan ubat tu pun, uh, you know, uh, walaupun dia punya tahap productivity tu tidak terlalu um, seperti dulu, um, tapi still, uh, dia membantu. Yeah. So, yes, journey untuk dapatkan ubat yang sesuai dengan kita pun ambil masa juga sebenarnya. Betul. So, Betul. yes, I salute dengan Jana sebab, you know, yeah. like apa yang dia mention tadi tu, you know, uh, nak kerja dengan situation, you kena makan ubat dan membuatkan you um, rasa, you know, yelah, emotion dan sebagainya tu memang memang akan akan uh, ada pada setiap orang. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. But, but um, hence, uh, benda tu lah yang akan membuatkan kita, you know, get to, uh, get used to it and, and, Um, you know, jadi jadi lebih better dan better. Insyaallah. Insyaallah. Thank I you. Get 
I get that, Jana and Carl. Same. I mean, when I had my um, postnatal depression, I do like five events coming up and um and some formal events, and I had to cancel a lot of them. And I I rugi banyak juga, but um I couldn't get up. I couldn't go out of the house. It's yep. like magleta seju and like. The thoughts, the thoughts were so weird in my head. It was like, yeah. like I was thinking about thinking. I don't know if you guys get what I mean about Oh that. yeah, definitely. You know that feeling? You're like thinking yes. about yourself thinking about yourself thinking. Yes. Yeah. That is so scary. So when I got the right medication, Alhamdulillah, I, I had it only for six months to deal with it. And then I did a lot of talk therapy. So I believe that a lot of talk therapy, spiritual therapy, Alhamdulillah, it did your part and the healing. Betul, betul. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, I just wanted to share um, some some figures go to round two. Um, if you guys watched it recently, kan, um, ada satu persidangan media by KKM, uh, Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia, di mana uh, YB Datuk Sri Dr. Adham, uh, our health minister, actually shared this. Can you imagine from January 1st till 21st of May this year, do you know how many calls were made to the psychosocial support uh, COVID punya helpline and also Talian Kasih bersama dengan Jakim punya helpline? 101,000 calls. 101,000 with 91.2% calling uh, for emotional and psychological support. I mean, it's a huge majority from this call, 101,000. And daripada sini kita boleh tengok, the current, this reflects the current situation of the mental health issues due to this pandemic of COVID-19. That due to this pandemic, obviously, and also the measures of the lockdown. Sebab banyak orang hilang pekerjaan, hilang orang tersayang, hilang punca pendapatan, um, you know, uh, creates a lot of panic, orang takut, you know, contracting the virus, takut orang tersayang kena virus dan sebagainya. So it creates a lot of distress. And the majority of the calls were for this. So just to just to put it in, into perspective, apa yang kita tak nampak akan sebenarnya Sarima Carl and Jana is we are currently facing a parallel pandemic. Jadi bukan sahaja pandemic of COVID-19 but it is a pandemic of mental health. Yes. And if we do not do something about it, a lot of people are going to go untreated. Sekarang ni pun ramai orang dah go untreated dah, especially in the community, right? Because a lot of the money that is pumped into, you know, mental health is all for the mental institutions. Jadi 1%, um, you know, daripada populasi dunia dan juga Malaysia sebenarnya ada chronic mental health condition. Tapi semua kebanyakan di mental institutions. So 99% of people in the community are actually undertreated. Jadi bayangkan dalam pandemic of COVID-19. Tapi one of the good things that has come out through this, according to YB Adham, is um, KKM menyediakan pada January sehingga April intervention, psychological first aid were given to healthcare workers, 274,000 guys. Can you imagine? Banyak sebenarnya. Um, psychoeducation, 189,000. Relaxation techniques pun, 199,000. And this is what we talk a lot about, kan Sarima? About relaxation techniques, yes. the power of breathing exercise. Kadang-kadang kita lupa, especially you guys, you know, you Breathe. hustle and hustle, kan? Lepas tu lupa nak bernafas dengan betul. Padahal breathing exercise yeah. itself pun membantu untuk menenangkan kita. Bantu for us to calm down. Jadi kita patut setiap hari try to do it as much as possible. Alhamdulillah. Dan one of the big things that came out kan guys through this is peruntukan untuk NGO. Jadi ada peruntukan untuk NGO yang, diber yang diberikan. Alhamdulillah. So this hopefully will empower the NGOs will empower the community supaya kita dapat meringankan beban of course the whole health system kan jadi seperti kita tengok sekarang ni pun KKM banyak uh, minta tolong you know suka-suka relawan siapa yang nak membantu tolong bantu because if not our health system will reach a breaking point so kalau kita semua boleh tolong wawarkan you know those of you that want to help please help because we really need all the help we can get inshallah okay Cik Puan yeah now we want to talk a little bit about this pandemic. Okay, okay so I've opened up that. Um, if you can maybe share. Can you share. hear me still? Yes, I can. Okay. okay. If we can share, if you can share, um, how has this pandemic, this you know lockdown, impacted your mental health? You know, we're all struggling with all these different kinds of mental health issues. How has that impacted you? Well, the fear of uncertainty is the thing that that I think we all have right now. It doesn't matter what walk of life you're from, what status you're from, 
who you are, your gender. I mean, it's just the fear of the uncertainty. But one thing I know is the thing that I hold on to is knowing that we can't control what happened yesterday and we can't control what's happening tomorrow. I mean, besides following the SOPs and, and doing our best as, as human beings, you know, um, the best we can do is take care of ourselves. So what I've been doing for this pandemic the last few months, I mean, almost two years is to take care of my health myself, you know what I mean? So that I can take care of my daughter and my husband. Um, and in the process, you know, people are like, why are you not shooting? Sorry, Ma, why are you not doing more entertainment? And I'm like, because right now, I think Allah has given me this chance to take care of me and my family, actually, to be honest. And I think that's the only hikmah or one of the hikmahs that I've taken from this pandemic, you know, the time to focus on, on family and, and in the process, being the patron of Miasa, I can, I can try help other people too. Um, but mentally, I, I, I mean, I do experience like I'm waking up at night more, like macam tiga empat kali, and I, I don't know why. Like, it's just, I think it's like our brain sekarang ni macam hardwired to what's going to happen next? Ah, macam, so, what's going to happen next? So like, basik bangun je, and I'm like, why do I keep waking up? You know, it's horrible. And then sometimes wake up too early. You know, that feeling like, oh my God, why is it 4 a.m. and I'm awake, you know? Um, and then your mind. I don't know if everyone else feels that like you wake up straight away and you're thinking, like, why am I thinking so fast? I shouldn't be thinking this fast. Then straight away, these thoughts kick in. And then midday, jadi penat, you know? So I cope with breathing. So I do a lot of uh, exercises and I'm reading a lot of books on vagal release. I know it sounds really scientific, but this is like, our vagus nerve that runs in our body ni, kalau kita tak cukup bernafas, dia akan affect cara kita berfikir. So I do a lot of like turning of the neck and deep breathing inside my diaphragm and breathe into the nose and out through the nose. I do a lot of these exercises, maybe seven, eight times a day, like just to calm down, you know what I mean? Because when you're not breathing slow, your mind goes fast. Yep. And then when I feel too tired, I go for a jog, just jog, the not music, I'm just listening to like the weekend and post Malone and like just running like, you know, and, and, and eating well, trying not to binge eat, it's too easy to order food, so I'm trying to cook and whatnot, you know, I'm playing with my daughter and looking at her and thinking, hey, you know what, you know, this, this is just part of history that's going to pass, inshallah. Yes, inshallah. It's tough Please. right now, but, but this is part of history that we are going through now. And, and it's tough. People are dying every day. I, I, it's hard when you look at the news, you know, you're like, between what's happening here and what's happening in Palestine, I'm like, my, I've been crying so much because I don't know where to cry more for. It's like so much tragedy is happening. But I always tell myself, you know, it, it happens for a reason, you know, um, and the test is on us. What are we going to do about it? Yes. You know, uh, we are all here to be tested. So I'm like, okay, what can we do? Let's raise some money. Let's speak out for injustice and let's follow the SOPs. And most important, let's take care of ourselves because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're adding problem. So that's what I'm doing now. You know, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. Oh, definitely you know, not. It's actually contributing because if you're healthier, the people around you are healthier and then society is healthier. And so that's what I'm focusing on during this MCO. Alhamdulillah. You know, Sarima, when you when you say all that, um, nampak tak kita sekarang ni bila ada um, penyakit mental ataupun isu kesihatan mental, we hmm. take care more of ourselves. We take care, we take care more of our health. Kalau yeah. dulu sebelum-sebelum ni, we keep on working and hustling and hustling. Kita tak jaga diri kita. Jadi tak, Allah sebenarnya is trying to tell us something. Okay, wait a minute. Slow down. Hmm. So why to coping yes, mechanism? Socially acceptable Betul. coping mechanism is kerja kuat, kerja <laughs> tak tidur, tak ni. You know, Betul. and then we look at people, you know, who take drugs and whatnot as um like socially, you know, messed up. But you know, we are running away from problems. All of us as human beings are just coping the best that we know based on our past and our upbringing. Right. And that's why this conversation is very important. So we want to encourage people to resort to healthy coping mechanisms that's as right. much as possible. That's and, right. you know, out there on on the internet, social media, banyak sebenarnya orang berkongsi tentang really good um, self-care tips sekarang yeah. ni. Um, so this is fabulous. one of the good things that have come out. Right. Fabulous. Awesome. Alhamdulillah. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Sarima. Okay, um, Carl, 
uh, soalan yang sama kan macam mana sekarang ni dalam pandemik um, COVID-19 ni kan dalam lockdown sebegini uh, bagaimana dia memberi impak kepada kesihatan mental kau sendiri sebab sebelum ni you know you shared a couple of times you know I've heard your stories you know you really struggled in the beginning tapi sekarang dah pandemik pula lepas tu dah lockdown pula kan kau jadi macam mana keadaan kau sekarang? Um, I can say Alhamdulillah, saya sebenarnya semakin hari semakin uh, uh, kata apa, semakin uh, okay. Um, ya, yeah, masih lagi saya kena go through saya punya uh, session with my doctor and kena uh, jumpa, selalu jumpa every month. Kadang-kadang tiga minggu sekali untuk 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 share dah dan dia, untuk dia ambil tahu juga tentang macam mana my condition lah. Um, as I said before. Uh, pandemik uh, walaupun kita lockdown sebenarnya kita dah terbiasa dengan keadaan ini sebenarnya dah setahun lebih dah um, Alhamdulillah kita dah banyak belajar tentang uh, macam mana nak handle dan juga menguruskan kita punya kehidupan seharian dalam keadaan lockdown dalam keadaan pandemik PKP dan sebagainya um, dan juga uh, menyesuaikan dirilah um, sebenarnya kita kita uh, tak boleh um, mengharapkan uh, yang yang uh, keadaan akan menjadi normal dalam masa masa dekat cepat, eh? cepat ataupun dekat. betul uh, sebab kita sendiri pun tahu benda ni akan ambil masa yang lama jadi kita sebenarnya kena ada inisiatif diri sendiri untuk uh, belajar untuk untuk menyesuaikan dirilah uh, dalam tempoh yang panjang so um, during lockdown macam ni macam yang saya kata tadi saya busykan diri dengan aktiviti walaupun kita tak ada aktiviti seni di luar tapi kita duduk kat rumah pun sebenarnya macam-macam benda yang kita boleh buat you know <laughs> macam previously last year saya uh, started Uh, uh, melukis balik uh, ah insyaallah ya yeah, melukis tapi saya tak pernah show dekat orang lah saya <laughs> saya punya sebab uh. saya punya minat memang dari sekolah memang melukis cuma nya saya tak pernah orang kata apa ada exhibition ke apa ke tak tengok kau uh, can we see some of your dekat atas <laughs> tak pernah dia uh. show okey uh, so yeah um, um, kalau tidak pun macam kalau ikut kan because i'm also in in fashion industry punya business so selalu saya melukis juga uh, sketching untuk 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 uh, baju dan sebagainya. So um, sebenarnya um, kita kita boleh polish diri kita untuk buat macam-macam benda lagi. Sebenarnya kadang-kadang kita tak tahu pun kita ada skills yang yang mungkin Betul. kita tak, tak pernah develop, yang mungkin kita tak pernah buat um, dan dan kita boleh develop benda itu sebenarnya during this time. Sebenarnya hmm. banyak banyak orang kata apa um, uh, um, apa ni blessing this guys lah sebenarnya walaupun ada pandemik walaupun ada um, apa ni lockdown dan sebagainya sebenarnya banyak uh, um, apa bahasa Melayu ni eh hikmah hikmah ya yeah. yang ah, yang mak tali ni kena bagi tahu tahu oh, itu lah dia <laughs> hikmah um, pandemik ni sebenarnya yes um, yang penting kita kena belajarlah untuk menyesuaikan diri kita dan juga uh, adapt dengan situation tu. Ya, yeah, kalau kalau kita keep on nak stress, kita keep on nak rasa macam uh, 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 tak sedap hati dan sebagainya, kita kita buat macam mana yang Kak Mam uh, ajar tadi tu, ya Cik Puan ada ajar tadi yang mana um, breathing exercise dan sebagainya. Mungkin sesiapa yang pernah go through um, apa session ataupun uh, counseling dan sebagainya kita tahu kan. Tapi untuk orang kat luar sana yang tak tahu sebenarnya macam-macam yang kita boleh buat untuk untuk melegakan diri kita sebenarnya. Salah satu dengan dengan exercise dan sebagainya apa yang 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 uh, Cik Puan Sarima suggest tadi lah um, um, macam saya saya suka berkebun petang-petang ataupun pukul 6 macam tu saya dah start turun dekat saya punya laman dan uh, potong pokok you know seronok tau sebenarnya sebab macam kita macam macam tau kau melukis berkebun enam belas kucing okay itu dia eh. rahsianya adalah Always keep yourself busy. Jangan nak duduk, yes. termenung, melangut dan fikir, 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 fikir. Because benda tu yang akan membuatkan... Overthinking. Kaya. Yes. Bila you dah start overthinking, benda tu akan tambah, 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 tambah lagi. Dan mungkin ambil masa beberapa hari-hari. Dan walaupun saya dalam dalam proses recovery, tapi sebenarnya benda tu boleh datang balik. Anytime. Oh, yes. Anytime. Yes. Anytime je dia boleh datang balik. So, saya Betul. kena tahu menyesuaikan diri saya supaya tidak lagi diganggu ataupun dia trigger kita balik. Atau pandai handle trigger tu lah. Kalau dia datang, kita macam, okay, benda ni biasa dah. I can hmm. handle this. Hmm. Okay, Sebab alright. Thank saya, you. Tak, saya sebenarnya tak larat bila kalau setiap kali saya uh, datang, saya punya nervous, uh, resah dan sebagainya tu, um, dia boleh, you know, effect orang lain juga. You know, Betul. orang di sekeliling kita pun sebenarnya penat untuk jaga kita. And 
Tapi uh, kita kena kesihankan satu macam tadi kita jaga diri kita, kasihankan diri kita dan juga orang di sekeliling kita. You know? Yeah. Kita kena yeah. ada kesedaran itu. Kesedaran itulah yang akan membuatkan sebenarnya kita akan uh, membuatkan diri kita sebenarnya cool down dan juga lega. Insyaallah. Yeah. Alright, thank you. Thank you very much, Carl. Um, Carl, you know what is important as well saya rasa untuk orang yang ada penyakit mental ni, um, di fasa awal tu mungkin tidak begitu mudah ya, Carl untuk kita buat benda-benda lain. Uh, kan betul, kadang-kadang betul. kadang-kadang ada stigma caregiver kata you know why don't you get up you know go jogging go out do something tapi kita hmm. sendiri pun energy dah tak ada ni depleted all none we have betul. none left. Jadi uh. um, ia juga perlukan masa jadi saya harap you know those of you that are listening also understand that you need time um, you know it's not it's okay. something that Uh, uh, and it's okay, you can try again tomorrow kan dia bukan sesuatu yang Carl cerita begitu and kita rasa macam bersalah kena buat macam tu sekarang nah, bersalah, nah, nah, kena buat sekarang so it's not you know and don't be- benchmark yourself against anyone so walaupun you nah. know Carl tadi berkongsi setahun mungkin sekarang kita dah dua tahun kita rasa eh kenapa aku dengan Carl tak sama pula please yeah. uh-huh. not benchmark okay. yourself so, sebenarnya you ambil hmm. masa berbulan-bulan yang hampir setahun hmm. untuk menyesuaikan hmm. diri dengan apa aktiviti yang saya boleh buat kita yeah. maksudnya waktu saya diagnose uh, dengan situasi uh, keadaan severe depression saya terus tahu apa yang saya nak buat tidak no. masa dalam tahun lebih yes. banyak waktu awal-awal tu saya berkurung dalam bilik saya tak nak jumpa betul. orang menangis, nangis ya yeah. uh, betul nak tengok TV tak boleh hmm. nak tengok nak buat benda-benda lain pun tak betul. boleh betul tidur pun tidak tidur baring je tidur tak boleh betul. dia masuk on thinking ya yeah. yes. macam-macam benda you tak nak jumpa yeah. orang you duduk um, lebih lebih better macam every time ada orang datang rumah you menyorok you tak nak jumpa orang you know betul, you cakap betul. dekat rumah so macam itulah ada events yang saya terpaksa pergi saya cancel last minute saya tak nak saya tak dan saya mm-hmm. tak ada label uh-huh. artis pun masalah tau ah yes i was worried about that too macam-macam alasan kena cari kan betul dia rasa bersalah yeah. like am i a liar now because i have to make up stuff kalau tak nanti kena kecam you know so you're like oh Because the human and the public figure, people don't split it up. They yes. just decide to the Betul. public. And I realized that lately, kalau I, you know, suarakan sesuatu sebagai human being, they're like, no, you're not. You're, you're, you're suarakan as a public figure. But actually, we are human beings. Oh, we are our job. Yep, mm-hmm. betul. And so that is why as well, you know, I have so much respect, you know, for Jana because you were so brave. Jana berani untuk keluar dan bagi tahu. Right now, you know, as yeah. you are shooting, you know, as you are still acting, so active and bagi tahu, siap-siap dah, I'm struggling right now. Mm. You know, so that takes a lot of courage, Jana. Sebabnya, the moment we we admit, eh, mengaku bahawa kita bertarung dengan apa sahaja penyakit mental, there's so much stigma. Orang punya label dan menghukum tu um, membuatkan kita sendiri rasa susah dan malu dan takut. Yang, yang, and yang also, dia, also dia, for jobs, Miss Jana, I'm oh sure yeah, it's exactly. terrifying for you with clients and all. So what, what gave you the strength, Jana, to... Betul. Sebenarnya nak 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 join live ni pun, I macam... Uh, sebenarnya macam, aduh, aku malas nak cakap macam tu. Mm-hmm. Ada rasa macam... Uh, sebab I faham yang I bagi tahu tu, I type. Dia tak sama dengan kita cakap. Betul. Ah, yeah. kita, kita type, kita boleh fikir betul-betul. So, okay, just post. Lepas tu tak payah baca dah apa pun orang komen. Kan? Macam ni untuk, untuk live ni, I rasa macam perlukan betul-betul kekuatan lah ni. Kita dah. Tapi, tapi, tapi sebabkan I ada baca soalan daripada Puan Anita tentang pandemik. So, soalan tu sangatlah trigger. Trigger saya. <coughs> soalan tu sangatlah trigger saya sebab saya rasa sangat-sangat simpati dengan nasib nasib-nasib orang lain pesakit-pesakit mental lain yang dia tak tahu pun dia ada penyakit mental uh, dalam masa yang sama dia imagine kalau dia orang kena lockdown dengan orang yang yang uh, with toxic family uh, yes. uh, ada uh, anyone in in her or his family yang abusive kan hmm? so so benda ni buat rasa sedih sangat sangat, sangat rasa macam eh macam mana eh? macam macam mana kalau kalau orang tu kena hidup lockdown dekat rumah dengan orang-orang yang macam tu saya rasa macam macam sebab orang sebab okey manusia ni dia datang daripada different different background and different education so uh, ada orang yang um, hidup dengan um, uh, dengan um, orang kata golongan yang 
bukan berpendapatan tinggi dan juga bukan berpendidikan tinggi, orang tidak yeah. mengambil serius masalah mental ini. Jadi uh, uh, persek- persek- persekitaran yang sangat toksik pun buatkan orang yang orang kehidupan akan jadi makin tertekan, tertekan dan tertekan. So dekat sini saya rasa sangat sangat simpati dengan orang yang 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 begini, yang yang macam kalau kita kita boleh ada duit untuk pergi jumpa uh, psikiatris, uh, dapatkan ubat. Sebab benda ni semua, benda ni sangat uh, memerlukan duit. Uh, agak costly kan. Yes. So bayangkan orang yang dalam keadaan macam ni, I rasa sangat-sangat simpati dengan mereka. So macam mana kita nak sampaikan dekat 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 orang yang 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 begini ke, keluarga keluarga yang 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 macam tu yang tidak ambil endah dengan dengan masalah mental ataupun yang sangat sangat yang 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 menyebabkan trauma kepada orang yeah. tersebut macam mana yes. kita nak bagi tahu kat dia kau tak sedar ke apa yang kau buat ni boleh effect mental orang even kalau Earth. kau kalau kau belasah orang tu sampai walaupun tak berdarah tak patah tak mati it affect the mental Yes. Yes. Psychological impact, betul. Of course. So, so kenapa? I don't know. I, I sympathy dengan orang yang macam. Yeah, of course. Jana, you know that is such an important point, kan, Sarima dengan Carl. Um, I think this is absolutely true, and this is what we are trying to do as much as possible, is when Jana sebab access kepada information, mental health information akses kepada bantuan dan pertolongan untuk perkhidmatan kesihatan mental di luar bandar suka okey we we really acknowledge this you know when i had this one talk kan baru ni sarima you know one of the ngos were telling me pananita kalau kita sentiasa fokus kepada selangor dengan wilayah kita tak akan pernah nampak tentang luar bandar sebab Betul. KL selangor dengan wilayah tak sama dengan orang dekat chengganu kelantan kedah perlis lain walaupun bandar it's not the same Because no. everyone is concentrating here. Everything is concentrated here tau. Betul. That is why kan Sarima, I mean being the patron of Miasa, just to give everyone some awareness as well is, rakan-rakan seperjuangan kami kan dekat Sabah, Sarawak, selalu tanya kepada Miasa, Puan Anita macam mana kami dekat sana nak jumpa terapis pun, ada berapa je satu Sarawak ni Betul. ada berapa kerat boleh kira dengan jari. Dengan population yang besar, you know, and mm-hmm. Sabah has the highest. They are is so prevalent. Orang yang ada penyakit mental, you know, Jana. This is this is such an important point. Tapi kami semua tengah cuba usahakan um, sebenarnya Jana dalam pandemik of COVID-19 ni lebih ramai. I think saya makan during this pandemic it has exposed kan sebenarnya a lot of bukan kita nak cakap failure tetapi kurangnya fokus kita kepada masyarakat B20 kepada masyarakat yeah. di gelandangan kepada masyarakat di penjara shelter yeah. homes dan sebagainya everybody Jadi, deserves treatment yes. everybody deserves exactly I, ia I, I, adalah I, hak semua individu semua individu untuk mempunyai jadi hak. healthy Yes, and it is one of the SDG, salah satu sustainable development goals is the right to healthcare. Semua orang ada hak untuk mendapatkan perkhidmatan. Itu yeah. yang kita tengah cuba lakukan and that is why and uh, you know, Sarima, you know this way, salah satu cara untuk Miasa dan rakan-rakan, you know, our friends on the ground is to provide free cost ataupun yeah. highly subsidized um, you know highly subsidized services for the B40 supaya dia dapat access services ni mm-hmm. sebab kalau tak macam Jana cakap betul orang yang ada duit boleh dapat access orang yang ada access to information lebih dibantu tapi bagaimana pula dengan orang-orang lain the uh, inequality of it all lah dia yes, tak balance kan kat situ betul betul so mm. this is this is what we really need to focus on as and well. and i think what jana said just now i really i really get it you know it's um it's, it's very strange I'll, i'll i'll make this quick i i know we're given like very short time to talk so it's fair but last night something happened next door in my house um mm. i heard my neighbor screaming okay there was a woman screaming and there was a man screaming And I straight away I panicked because I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I call the authorities? They won't believe me. What do I do? And I, then I felt like other people feel because it's the first time I've heard it. And I didn't know who was, was somebody being abused? Was right. a teenager being hit by her dad? And then my mind went to other things like because of the news lately, like, is it worse? What, what's going on? 
And it went on for two hours. So I called up the management next door. I was like, excuse me, on the top floor of your condo, I didn't even you know what they told me. Oh, mm-hmm. you don't have jurisdiction to tell us you're in a different condo. So I was like, what? So I, and I know, Jonathan, because there's so many people. And if this is happening in Banda, where people oh. have access to help. Yes. What more in the years, and, and because it's become accepted. Unfortunately, you know, uh, Anita, like, you know, we lack education pasal boundaries and abuse. Yes. Kalau kalau pukul anak kan, selagi tak berdarah aku tu mengajar, actually. Padahal kau mengajar dia untuk jadi ganas je sebenarnya. So, and internalizing fear. And that, that is, there's a lot of education that's needed. But, you know, yeah. Anita, Miasa is trying their best. And you, we, you're the only NGO, and that's why I wanted to be the patron, that gives free services like essential services to be 40. Alhamdulillah, you know, at least we're, we're doing something. And, you know, I'm happy that Jana today is here and Carl and maybe their followers, inshallah, will, will spread this news because kita yes. ni sibuk membawang pasal benda negatif je. Kenapa kita tak membawang pasal benda yang berfaedah? Boleh tak kita tambahkan retweet dengan sharing pasal benda yang berfaedah ni sikit? Boleh tak? That's something that I really wish, you know? I mean, being being hit as a child, it destroys your your self-esteem, it destroys your sense of, of ability and, and it destroys your sense of who, who you are because you rasa you kecil sangat macam you ni tak berguna. Kalau orang boleh pukul you sampai you rasa macam tu, mana kuasa you sebab manusia. So helplessness. Mm-mm. And kalau kita tengok daripada data dan statistics as well, it does show that there has been an increase in domestic violence during this pandemic of COVID-19, not only here in Malaysia, tetapi across the globe. Um, mm-hmm. but, but, but NGOs are doing their best. The government is doing their best as well. Um, help is available. So kalau kita dengar, kita nampak, please do not ignore. Do yes. something about it. Jangan fikir kita jaga tepi kain orang. We need Itulah. to be a proactive society. Ini penting sebenarnya. Ada beza. Jaga tepi kain dengan membantu, beza dia besar. Oh, lain sangat. Lain, <laughs> betul. But Thank I'm you. still going to find out today what happened in that house. Because okay. Mm. I, I now that now, I nak pergi nak pergi tak nak, nak dia tahu juga. Now that they're quiet lagi I'm worried. Betul. I'm like, you know, so yep. it's tough. We all need yep. to work together on this, kan? Yes. Thank you, Sarima. Um, yeah. Jana, just nak tanya sikit. So Jana sekarang ni macam, you know, because berbeza ni Jana dengan uh, Carl dengan Cik Puan Sarima adalah di mana jana dalam fasa ini, dalam your journey to recovery. So you are, you know, maybe at the beginning phase ni kan. Jadi sekarang ni dengan pandemik, dengan lockdown ni, macam mana dia memberikan impact kepada kesihatan uh, mental jana sendiri? Lebih membantu duduk dalam lockdown ataupun macam mana untuk jana? Saya, saya dia lebih membantu kalau saya kerja. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Saya saya kena kerja Sebab saya dah kerja dari umur uh, 16 tahun So kita punya body dengan Macam brain dah biasa bergerak Betul Bila duduk rumah Cuma cuma kalau sebelum-sebelum ni mungkin I tak teruk macam this year Because I ada time untuk reset yes. Cara untuk saya reset adalah Bila kita pergi travel Betul itu I punya rasa ter- terapi lah where orang tak boleh contact I, I betul-betul tak boleh fikir pasal kerja sebab tak boleh patah balik. Betul. <laughs> kan, uh, lepas tu macam I still bergerak, bekerja kena fikir oh mana nak pergi, apa nak buat, nak pakai baju apa, nak ambil gambar apa, nak buat konten apa. I still bekerja tapi mm-hmm. bukan dalam Malaysia and then I boleh jadi, I boleh jadi diri sendiri maksudnya kat luar tu tak payah risau kalau orang nak ambil gambar ke. Maksudnya bukannya kita ni sombong, tidak. Cuma bila bila orang tak payah ambil gambar kita kita boleh buruk <laughs> kita boleh kita macam, manusia kita manusia biasa ah, kita oh. boleh ada hari yang kita keluar memang aku tak nak pakai makeup aku nak pakai baju biasa je aku aku tak nak buat rambut ya yeah. kan? selipar je nak pergi jalan macam biasa Best, kan ah so so, so itu uh, untuk saya travel adalah satu terapi untuk saya yang saya rasa oh ini time untuk aku reset I akan reset at least kalau dah kerja setahun tak berhenti, tak cuti tu oh mungkin ada reset dalam 2 minggu 3 minggu reset right. Tapi bila pandemik ni dia efek saya teruk sangat sebab kita dah 2 tahun tak travel kan. Yes. Hmm. So dia memang, uh, saya memang kena kerja. Saya tak boleh tak kerja. So apa yang saya buat adalah sekarang ni kat rumah uh, sebab sekarang ni saya dah into directing. So bila my the noise in my head macam 
selalu bising-bising sangat I akan just ambil my my laptop and then I akan terus buat script je so oh, so I, I I I I channel my noise to something else uh, macam tu With maybe Jana so boleh productive. buat maybe Jana boleh buat script pasal you know mental health like work yes. on something that you know the real struggles you know that would be so cool I know I'm not coming I'm not coming terus okay, boleh 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 <laughs> Betul, I think it's so important tu Jana sebab um, on your point kan Sarima sebab kalau kita tengok um, banyak filem, kan films, movies, dramas dia banyak inaccurate portrayals of people with mental Alright. health condition sangat. Jadi bila kita punya portrayal ni, ni tak tepat, maka sebab tu stigma tu terbina dan lebih kita lebih reinforce stigma. Padahal sebenarnya kita dapat combat stigma ni, media boleh main peranan yang sangat besar sebenarnya. So mungkin betul Sarima. Uh, Jana can work on something like that, that will be so helpful insyaAllah Kita doa sama-sama and you know I like your point about travel tau Jana Sebab that is one of my big coping mechanisms as well And Same. it's so difficult when you cannot travel Betul. Sebab bila travel you know I love reading So saya dapat baca banyak buku uh, Macam Jana cakap kerja tu I get to catch up a lot on my work You know even mm. when we're not working there's still work So kita dapat catch up benda-benda lain untuk kerja kita juga. So I really miss that downtime. Tapi insyaAllah kita doakan sama-sama. Okay, um, Sarima, kita dah pukul 10.53 ni. Ada lajunya masa. Um, okay, Itulah. I just want to ask you. Um, you know, you've shared um, quite a couple of times juga kan about your struggles dulu pasal uh, postpartum depression and all this. But maybe you can share because postpartum depression dekat Malaysia besar eh? in terms of percentage is about 10%. So a lot of people do struggle with postpartum depression. But maybe you can also share some telltale signs. Macam mana seorang ibu wanita kan nak tahu bahawa dia ada postpartum depression so that dia tidak berlarutan, dia, dia mendapatkan rawatan secepat yang mungkin. Uh, uh, Cik Puan, if you can share a little bit on that. Okay, so I think from what I learned, because it's been uh, almost a year and a half post- so, post my postpartum dah. So Alhamdulillah, Betul. I'm in a much better place now. And I feel, actually I feel, Jana, trust me on this, you will feel stronger. Because mm. once you've gone through this, kan, you're like, oh, actually I can cope with anything. So I feel much stronger and better now, Alhamdulillah. Um, some of the signs that I wasn't aware of was um, overthinking. Oh, so yeah. a lot of people said that once you give birth, you're going to PK risau pasal your baby non-stop kan. But... I thought that was normal and tak boleh tidur. I thought that was normal and I thought that I had really weird thoughts like macam I'm holding my baby. What if my baby dies? Oh, what if I if I put her down and then she, she has sudden in, infant cot death couple again. So all these really weird thoughts and then I was looking at my body and I was like, what if my body never goes back to normal? What if my husband doesn't find me attractive? Like non-stop now. So, and then everyone around me is like, during pantang period, oh, this is normal, this is normal. But I was like, but I can't breathe, my heart's up here. And then, jumpa doctor, doctor's like, it's gastric. I'm like, this is not gastric. My heart is here. How can this be gastric, Ken? This is my Betul. stomach kat bawah ni. Like, you know, it's funny, but it's not funny. You know what I'm saying? Betul. And I'm like, you're not listening to me. So, because I have a background in psychology, Alhamdulillah, and I've actually been in therapy for almost 10 years now, I knew there was something not okay. Let me tell you something. Kalau you are the issue from your past that you haven't worked on sebelum ni, um, there's a higher increase that you can get postnatal depression. Because benda yang terpendam tu, dia akan keluar lepas anak you lahir. Sebabnya, perubahan yang sangat kena dalam hidup. Perubahan and then kena adjust dan badan dah jadi lain, semua dah jadi lain, your marriage dah jadi lain and semua yang you simpan kat bawah, kat dalam, terpendam tu, selalunya hmm. dia akan keluar. Yep. So, For me, I was in therapy for eight years before it happened and I still had postnatal depression. So, yep. so many women out there are messaging me. So, look for the signs like uh, overthinking, thinking the worst, cannot yes. sleep at all. Bukan sebab baby, bila baby tidur pun kita tak boleh tidur. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, thinking the worst things are going to happen. Um, crying non-stop. I mean, some people will say it's hormonal imbalance. Yes, betul. But hormonal imbalance campur trauma dan isu dari uh, dari you know your past combine yeah. together dengan perubahan hidup yang ketara oh my god ini satu resipi orang kata resipi yang meletup. sangat menakutkan yang meletup okay so uh. alhamdulillah i had a husband that was very calm dia memang calm and he helped me do it and i have a therapist and until today i see my therapist once a week so calls like every two three weeks 
for me, I started therapy before I even knew I had postnatal depression because yep. I wanted to maintain my health. And, I, and, and I'm fortunate that I can see a therapist, alhamdulillah. But those are some of the signs. Go talk to your doctor, meet your GP. I met, actually, even though I know I have a therapist, I went to my GP first. Can you imagine? Because I was like, why is my heart rate so high? Why am I sweating so much? And so the doctor is like, I think, Saima, you're suffering from anxiety right now. And I'm like, what? You know, so there's jumpa therapist. And I had to take some medication to balance the brain, calm myself down. And uh, until today, still talk therapy, alhamdulillah. So, so interesting, it's, it's la, sorry, ma- mm-hmm. So interesting the point uh, when you mentioned about seeing your GP. Sebabnya, based on data dekat Malaysia, eh, um, there was this one research done by Health Systems Research bersama dengan MOH um, uh, and Harvard University di mana they found out that 49, eh, 49% of Malaysians actually see a GP as their first point of contact when they have a mental health issue. Sebenarnya, yeah. 49%. Yeah, and and Alhamdulillah, I was the same. You know, when I met my, of course, I went to see the psychiatrist, etc. Tapi I also went to see my GP. And let me tell you, my two GPs, they're so helpful. Exactly, punya, my GP was excellent. Yes, diorang punya empathy levels are so high that once I come in, tengok muka diorang pun, I dah rasa full blah blah. Relax, skip. Tapi yes. tak semua orang. I just got a message yesterday from a lady who mm-hmm. saw a doctor and the doctor unfortunately made fun of her. No, not of course not not awful. all um, GPs Quite even psychiatrists yeah. pun ada juga psychiatrists yang yeah. kurang empathy kan so dia yes. bergantung sebenarnya okay, yang sebab dah terlalu banyak kali terdedah dengan masalah ni mereka terpaksa you know kurangkan emosi so dia jadi nampak kan? macam tak kisah you know but hmm. um yeah so that those are some of the signs so it's not meroyan it's not your imagination yes. betul thank you thank you, you, you so much you take care of yourself Yes, definitely. Thank you, Sarima. Um, especially for first-time moms, kan? Sebabnya kita first-time jadi mak, tak tahu, tak reti, kan? Uh, so when all tak these... Tahu, I didn't know what tahu. was happening to me, you know? And I know a lot of moms out there, they're going through it. And some yes. of the breastfeed are not menangis. Betul. You know, sangat depressed. And then, you know, it's, it's very tough for people. Very... And I think one, 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 just one point that I wanted to add, sorry, Ma, on what you just said is, okay, dia sebenarnya dia punya perbezaan tu because, um, you know, you said about you thought it was normal, kan? Yeah. That when you were overthinking. Sebab sebenarnya apabila seorang ibu melahirkan anak, kita akan melalui, kita panggil postpartum blues juga. Di mana Betul. kita akan rasa macam Sari Ma tadi. Tapi perbezaannya adalah postpartum blues ni lepas minggu, dua minggu dia hilang. Hilang. Like, kalau it continues, then you know something is not right. Yeah, mine so continues for like three away. months. Betul. And then I thought, oh my God, what's wrong with me? I, yes. Is this because I am an entertainer? So my mind yeah. macam terlebih ke apa? But no. Yes. Alhamdulillah, I got help. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chip Wan, for sharing that. Okay, Carl. Ni soalan penting ni, Carl. Mewakili. Ha, tu dia. Mewakili the men. Kan? Para kaum-kaum, you know, lelaki, bapa, you know, it doesn't matter lah. Um, you have been very open, kan, Carl? The past, you know, you went through, uh, ataupun you crossed over to your recovery. Um, Carl, secara terbuka, ya, bercerita tentang your mental health struggles, your depression dan sebagainya. Jadi, kita kita dekat sini, kita nak faham, ya, Carl, macam mana, Carl, what what encourages you? What made you brave to share about this? Sebab dia stigma ni, kesihatan mental, penyakit mental ni dalam stigma tinggi. Yeah. Tambahan lagi pula men's mental health. Lagilah stigma tinggi. Bayangkan UK kena buat campaign ni. You know, Prince, you know, had to It do a campaign. UK. Yes, hmm. to do a Heads Together campaign. Nationwide, mm-hmm. talk about mm-hmm. men's mental health. Dan di sini, Carl secara tenang bercerita tentang penyakit mental. Adakah Carl tak, tak rasa ataupun you didn't cave to stigma? Jadi hmm. apa yang buat Carl berani Carl sebenarnya kalau Carl boleh kongsi? InsyaAllah. Okay, first of all, um, pasal kita kena ada understanding tu tau. So, bila saya sendiri dah betul-betul faham tentang apa tu mental health punya isu. So, saya ada rasa uh, kasihan kan dekat orang dekat luar sana yang mungkin ada masalah yang sama tapi tak tahu macam mana nak reach out. Yes. Yang selalu mungkin simpan saja dan family, kawan-kawan, surrounding dia pun tak tahu macam mana nak buat dengan dia dan tak tahu itu adalah mental health uh, issue yang dia alami. So, um, bagi saya it's important untuk semua orang tahu dan awareness, uh, kena ada awareness pasal mental health um, because um, banyak benda yang, banyak ramai orang yang kita boleh selamatkan sebenarnya. 
You know, uh, benda ni jangan dibiarkan terlalu lama. Uh, macam saya, saya um, didiagnose pada tahun 2019 sebelum COVID okay. lagi. Um, masa tu sebenarnya um, saya memang tak ready untuk bercakap dengan sesiapa pun. Saya memang tak, saya memang banyak mendiamkan diri sahaja. Tetapi uh, towards my therapy, so, so memang beberapa kali beberapa banyak terapi yang saya pergi. Um, dan saya discuss, sampaikan uh, dia boleh membuatkan saya punya uh, kata apa, confident level tu sedikit gain lah, you know, naik sedikit. So, uh, waktu itu uh, bila saya berbincang dengan saya punya therapist, um, uh, should I do this? Um, because uh, kalau saya rasa benda tu boleh membuatkan saya feel good dan juga mungkin membantu emosi saya setiap kali saya ada rasa tak senang dan sebagainya, hmm. um, mungkin perkara tu boleh uh, membuatkan saya rasa better. So yep. yes, um, Alhamdulillah memang every time um, saya ada rasa untuk membantu orang lain saya rasa better dan saya rasa you know um, 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 bukan nak, nak menunjukkan kita pandai, tidak Betul? kerana kita tahu struggle dia macam mana kita tahu um, uh, uh, berat dan juga keperitan dan sakitnya tu macam mana yang susah nak explain, orang tak tahu sebenarnya macam mana kita nak explain ke orang you know all this while, dari kecil sampai ke besar mungkin kita dah pernah Uh, go through ataupun kita pernah nampak situation yang mungkin macam tadi kan kita dekat, dekat kampung orang ada orang yang treat orang yang ada mental health issue ni dan mengatakan dia tu uh, tak berapa betul dan sebagainya yang dikurung dalam betul. rumah dan sebagainya tak bagi yeah. jumpa kerana malu stigma betul. you know Stig- family tu tak nak orang kata anaknya tak 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 okey ya yeah, lah uh-huh. uh, so Um, sampai bila benda tu nak berlangsung you know i i i faham i mean i tahu dalam situation sekarang ni pun zaman sekarang ni pun masih ada benda tu sebenarnya cuma ni mungkin yes. um, mereka tidak terdedah kepada you know talk macam ni you know yes, tidak tahu macam mana cara untuk pergi reach out dan sebagainya so yes mm-hmm. dengan kuasa yang kita ada social media dan sebagainya saya menganggap ini adalah peluang terbaik untuk kita reach out dan juga bantu sesiapa yang ada yang mungkin tidak tahu macam mana nak share alhamdulillah mm. Saya menerima banyak message dan juga DM dan sebagainya yang meminta bantuan dan juga uh, tanya pendapat dengan saya apa yang perlu mereka lakukan. You know, ada ibu, ada remaja, ada you know lebih kurang usia saya dan sebagainya kena buang kerja setahun tak tahu nak buat apa. Um, 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 apa uh, pergi minta kerja lain tak dapat dengan situation macam sekarang ni. Yes. You know apa yang boleh dia buat. So kita bantu apa yang saya boleh bantu dan alhamdulillah saya syukur sebenarnya saya jumpa dengan Miasa Malaysia. Um, um, uh, apa ni di mana uh, lebih banyak orang kata apa uh, peluang untuk kita reach out dan juga jumpa uh, uh, pergi kepada orang ramai dekat luar sana you know okay. saya saya puji sangat-sangat apa yang Miasa buat dan insyaAllah saya pun sama-sama lagi masih lagi nak nak berkongsi dan juga um, kalau boleh nak bagi awareness pada sesiapa sahaja yang yang memerlukan uh, Thank you thank you so much Carl you know apa yang Carl kongsikan Carl adalah apa yang Miasa perjuangkan daripada you know our inception which is healing through helping sebenarnya. Hmm. Jadi dengan cara membantu orang lain Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala membantu kita sebenarnya. Yes. Harapannya Betul. macam itulah. Betul. Uh, saya, saya saya lagi you know, rasa better dan better dan better. You know bila kita rasa orang kita rasa feel good kan kita pergi bantu I orang. I get that. Yes. Yeah. Betul. I feel the same kau. Actually reaching out and sharing help me feel better. You're right. Hmm. It's true actually. And you're so brave as a man because you know from oh, yeah. small society ni dah cakap budak lelaki eh jangan nangis eh kau ni laki ke perempuan ni you know it's so the culture of sexism and prejudice yeah. towards boys Because expressing their feelings orang ada understanding tu tau selama ni hmm. mungkin dia orang tak tahu um, apakah mental health issue ni so sebab hmm. tu awareness tu tak ada dalam diri kebanyakan orang di negara kita itu so, satu kau tapi uh, lagi satu ramai dari segi cultural upbringing perempuan kena macam ni lelaki kena macam ni and then lelaki kena pendam simpan semua perasaan dan sebab itulah bila kita tengok dari segi statistik and reporting sekarang men are the ones that are suffering a lot of mental health problems tetapi coping mechanism mereka agak lain dengan perempuan right yeah. and we see a lot of domestic abuse cases we see men that are taking their own lives we see a lot of situations and we selalu macam tunjuk jari like the guys are the perpetrators the guys are the perpetrators but I always ask you know what happened to that man yang jadikan dia seganas itu yang jadikan dia tak ada empathy, yang jadikan dia begitu helpless sehingga kan dia sanggup buat macam tu kat isteri dia atau anak dia. Semua orang ada cerita di sebalik yang kita nampak. 
Betul, that's a very good point because um, kalau kita lihat eh, sebenarnya lelaki yang paling lambat untuk mendapatkan rawatan. So usually men, when they come forward for help, diorang dah dalam keadaan yang severe dah. Yang datang pun dah dalam yeah. keadaan uh, tak boleh berfungsi, um, chronic emptiness, yang datang Betul. dah menangis-nangis. And this is where you know it's dah dalam keadaan yang teruk and that is also why um, suicide is higher amongst men. Uh, hmm. You know, because of the methods used and because dah lambat. The dapat. cultural maybe, perception. Maybe I, can, maybe I can share with you lah my situation. Um, saya memang tak, 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 tak pernah sedar pun my situation. I mean, uh, my depression punya level tahap mana. Dan saya tak pernah hmm. tahu pun itu adalah depression. No. Hmm. So saya thought, saya, saya punya pemikiran adalah kerana saya overwork, saya kerja, saya tak tidur berminggu-minggu. You know, just kalau tidur pun yeah. mungkin sekejap je, sejam setengah jam, lepas tu sambung kerja balik. You know, mm-hmm. uh, keep mm. on uh, repeating the same thing for for a long time. So mm. yeah, um, sampai satu tahap di mana bila saya dah tak boleh berfungsi dengan betul, saya dah duduk menyendiri dan sebagainya, dah, keep, dah start untuk ada thought untuk um, self-harming dan sebagainya. Um, mm-hmm. Um, um, baru waktu tu yang saya dibawa saya dibawa dan bukan atas kerelaan hati saya sendiri untuk dibawa ke hospital dan sebagainya tidak sebab saya tak tahu pun. saya tak tahu pun itu adalah depression dan apa um, uh, sampailah bila doktor diagnose dan ini adalah keadaan yang sangat severe so baru saya tahu so oh, saya kan? saya uh, ready moment saya mula memang tak ready tapi maksudnya saya open up dan juga try sedikit-sedikit untuk untuk uh, mendapatkan rawatan alhamdulillah yeah, i totally agree and for any time call i think men really need to 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 have more awareness about yep. their own self taking care of themselves because men are the protectors of women and the, yes. the protectors of society so you know most wars are created by men most crimes we would say are created by men if we look at stats but why the question is why so what do we do to turn things around so that men can cope with their feelings differently instead of lashing out on the world and their wives and children etc we need to normalize uh, mental health amongst men alhamdulillah mungkin kau ni pemangkin boleh bantu yang lain insyaallah kan insyaallah insyaallah amin okay thank you so much um jana lupa lah tadi jana minta maaf sangat Happy belated birthday. Yeah. Oh, panjang umur Tuna Rizki. Amin, amin. Amin. Allah. Okay. Alright. Okay, Jana nak tanya. Um, so, kita semua belum eh. Uh, baru-baru ni Jana dah disclose yang Jana ada bipolar disorder um, and you are struggling. So, mungkin um, Jana boleh kongsikan sedikit ya sebab banyak di Miasa kita ramai ya. Bipolar um, peers, disorder peers ramai sebenarnya di Miasa. Walaupun kalau ikut um, statistik hanya satu peratus ya daripada mereka yang ada penyakit mental, uh, tapi mungkin sebab kami adalah kumpulan pejuang ya, jadi there's so many um, you know bipolar those with bipolar disorders, those with schizophrenia disorder as well. Jadi mungkin um, Jana boleh berkongsi macam mana ataupun bila uh, Jana realise that you know something wasn't quite right and you needed help. When did that realisation came? Bila Jana sedar sebenarnya yang ada benda tak kena? Um, uh, selalunya sebab 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 I dulu kalau kalau nak kata daripada dari segi um, depression traumatized semua tu daripada sekolah lah kan daripada kecil okay. uh, mm-hmm. tapi kita tak rasa benda tu serius kan sebab kita kecil tak tahu apa-apa kan betul semua rasa macam dah tak nak hidup semua tu kan tapi bila kita as macam bila dah, dah lama-lama macam ni, uh, uh, bila kita dah happy untuk, untuk untuk saya kan macam macam masa masa saya membesar tu saya still macam keep on macam uh, finding excuses macam oh aku rasa macam ni mungkin sebab aku belum dapat apa aku nak aku rasa macam I I I I I, I, I macam selalu salahkan diri sendiri macam oh kenapa uh, aku rasa macam ni mungkin sebab kenapa aku rasa tak best ni Kenapa orang treat aku macam ni? Kenapa orang buat aku macam ni? I, 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 I selalu salahkan diri sendiri dulu. Sampailah satu tahap yang kita rasa macam, eh aku dah tak ada benda dah untuk aku salahkan diri aku sendiri. Faham right. tak? Macam aku dah sepatutnya di tahap sekarang ni aku patut rasa bersyukur. Gembira. Sebab aku happy dengan apa yang aku ada. Tapi kenapa aku, kenapa rasa macam ni kan? So, yes. 
dia bukan hanya rasa tau yang orang orang masalah stigma masyarakat ni dia dia cuma macam eh orang lain pun sedih juga betul yeah. orang lain pun tertekan juga orang lain lagi teruk daripada kau tak ada duit orang lain mm-hmm. tak ada kerja itu masalah stigma masyarakat yang orang tak faham bila nama kata penyakit dia bukan yes. masalah rasa saja sebab bukan saya kita pilih saya benda boleh, tu ha, saya pelakon saya boleh cakap rasa tu dekat sini rasa rasa tapi dia sekarang dekat sini Yeah. <laughs> itu yang orang tak faham. Kau sedih dekat sini. Orang yang orang yang me, ada masalah mental ni, dia punya rasa dekat sini. Dia punya pemikiran dia yang sampai rasa macam terlalu bodoh, terlalu 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 teruk. Teruk takut, sangatlah takut, diri dia kan. sampai rasa macam hmm. aku tak patut hidup kat dunia ni. Tu adalah di sini, bukan di sini. So, um, uh, apa yang buatkan saya, betul-betul saya rasa saya kena pergi jumpa doktor adalah Mungkin uh, uh, saya, mungkin sebenarnya penyakit mental ni dah lama Tapi okay. dia semakin lama, dia semakin teruk of Kalau course. kita dah, dah tak dapat rawatan oh. So, tahap yang sangat teruk tu adalah bila um, uh, Memang kalau sebelum ni, kalau saya rasa teruk sangat je Saya akan terus book flight, terus tiba-tiba je dah hilang dah Tapi, ini yang teruk sangat adalah bila Uh, satu bila MCO ni lockdown kita punya jadual dah bertindih-tindih tau betul sebab so, contoh macam sekarang kita tak boleh shoot so ke depan nanti yang sepatutnya kita ada break kita dah susun jadual oh aku betul. apa shooting ni aku ada break at least uh, seminggu yeah. semua ja- hmm. semua break tu dah tak ada dah dia dah betul. bertindih-tindih hmm. dah jadual sebab backlog tu kan betul hmm. 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 lepas tu yang paling teruk dah sampai tak teruk sangat tu adalah bila kita solat pun kita dah, 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 dah tak dengar kita cakap apa Hmm. Ah itu yang saya rasa saya tak, tak boleh handle sebab sebab dah teruk sangat. Kita kita solat tapi kita tak boleh nak khusyuk, tak boleh tak nak fokus. Tak boleh nak fokus. Um, ya yeah, the, the the voice in my head is like too loud. Can't Then your own bacaan. Ah so I rasa macam eh aku dah tak boleh handle lah benda ni kan. Hmm. And then itu yang kita buat kita re- Sebab saya selalu apa-apa saya akan reflect balik sebab kita akan reflect lagi. Be, being someone yang Uh, macam bu- bukan orang yang sempurna bukan lahir daripada keluarga yang sempurna buatkan saya selalu sentiasa berfikir cuba untuk memahami cuba untuk muhasabah yang macam kenapa aku macam ni eh? oh mungkin sebab macam ni kenapa aku macam ni eh? so kita selalu reflect diri kita reflect reflect and then kita cuba untuk faham orang lain kenapa orang tu macam tu eh oh mungkin sebab dia keluarga dia macam tu orang treat dia Betul. macam tu. kita kita cuba orang, nak faham orang lain kan Betul. saya 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 tak pernah pun rasa Uh, sensitif dengan pengguna-pengguna social media yang macam yang maki-maki kita mm-hmm. <laughs> yang kaki best, keyboard warrior semua tu saya tak pernah rasa benci dengan diorang sebab kadang-kadang saya rasa kesian saya selalu rasa kesian bila diorang komen benda negatif kat saya saya rasa kesian dekat diorang saya rasa macam dia ni mesti tak happy kan saya rasa macam tu tau dia ni And they, don't, they don't know what they're going through actually uh, kita tak kenal dia, dia kita tak tahu dia dia lalui apa. So bila dia orang komen benda yang buruk pun rasa macam kesian ni kat dia. Mesti mesti dia jenis. And then bila kita check balik profile dia, oh, tengok dia punya posting-posting yang macam emotional. So kita cakap, oh, dia ni mesti ada something wrong yang buatkan dia tak happy, yang buatkan dia rasa inilah cara untuk diluahkan. Walaupun benda tersalah. Nak luahkan kat kita. Kan? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So um, Uh, berbalik-balik tadi kepada soalan um, pasal I punya bipolar tu so bila I dah tak boleh nak handle sangat saya pergi jumpa doktor dan bila uh, doktor diagnose saya ada bipolar saya macam ha? <laughs> ha? saya bipolar doktor <laughs> tapi macam bila kita reflect balik reflect diri kita sendiri and then dekat sini saya nak bagi tahu dekat semua viewers Um, kalau kita kalau anda hidup dalam keadaan yang tidak sempurna um, kalau anda hidup dengan orang yang 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 buat anda rasa macam kenapa dia buat aku macam ni aku ni tak patut hidup ke kan yang sampai kau kena buat aku macam ni kau memang nak tengok aku mati hmm. kalau kalau anda hidup dengan orang yang macam tu jangan salahkan diri kita Hmm. Jangan jangan blame diri you macam Ya Allah kenapa kau bagi aku hidup Kalau kau nak aku hidup terseksa macam ni So oh. kau, kau you, jangan salahkan diri you You salah, salahkan dia Salahkan dia Like memang you kena kesian juga dekat dekat dia And at the same time you, can, you tak boleh salahkan diri you Kena salahkan dia Dia yang salah Dia yang buat you macam tu Dia 
bukannya you yang you patut rasa salah. Hmm. So I rasa I rasa tu cara yang terbaik kot sebab sebab ini this is the root macam mana orang boleh start traumatize, orang boleh start um, uh, uh, ada rasa uh, uh, boleh jadi mental sebab you you keep on thinking, you keep on blaming yourself. Yeah. So, so so jangan salahkan diri you tu je. Okay, thank you, That's thank you point. very much. Um, ya, yeah, Jana. Betul sebenarnya sebabnya uh, penyakit mental ni bukan sesuatu yang kita bangun tidur hari ni terus dapat penyakit mental. It is a build up of a lot of things, kan? So, the underlying issue tu, the crux of the issue, kenapa kita dapat punca, ya? kenapa kita dapat penyakit mental tu, we need to address. Sebab benda ni dah berlaku bertahun-tahun lamanya. Kita lambat mendapat rawatan, kita simpan kan Jana, kita tak bersuara, tak bercakap. Jadi lama-lama bila semua faktor dah mencukupi, mencukupi macam Encik Puan Sarimah cakap tadi, dan dia akan meletup dan di situlah bermulanya penyakit mental ni Jana. Tapi harapan dia adalah semua penyakit mental boleh sembuh. Okay, so this is the message of hope. Alhamdulillah. There are interventions for it. Help is available rawatan ada, intervensi ada, sokongan ada. Jadi pihak-pihak sokongan seperti ada. kami, betul um, yang paling penting reach out, get the help that you need. Okay? So inilah and kepentingan. You know, Puan Anita, there's one thing that Jana kata tadi and mentioned mm-hmm. and it's so true. Um, you know, a lot of uh, childhood development psychologists, yes. they say that budak-budak ni, kita internalize apa yang berlaku. Maksudnya kalau aku kena pukul ataupun aku kena dera ataupun duduk aku macam ni, semua salah aku. Kalau mak bapak bergaduh, ni mesti salah aku sebab akulah benda ni berlaku. Dan disebabkan itu, that's what I mentioned earlier, the child goes up with low self-esteem, questioning themselves yes. and dia jadi satu demi satu life experience yang later on in life masalahnya. Bila dah successful macam Jana kata, bila dah menang anugerah, semua nampak sempurna, hidup nampak lengkap, tiba-tiba. Bila dah tak ada tempat untuk kita blame lagi, kenapa perasaan kita macam tu, dia datang. And then from there you have that realization. Maybe it's not the world. Maybe I'm carrying something. And that that is the most painful part. But Jana, after you pass that part, you will know now that it was not your fault all along. Sebenarnya. And then you will heal from there. But that's that's also the thing, can uh, Puan, when it happens that uh, this is the reason why a lot of children, a lot of things that that grow up in such a way that then when they go through the psychological challenges, they keep it to themselves. Sebab diorang dah blame diri diorang. Jadi untuk yeah. diorang nak open up kepada orang lain, diorang tak boleh dah. So nak it becomes open up kepada siapa, Puan Anita? Betul, yeah. betul. Nak betul. open up kepada so siapa, kepada orang yang burden. buat kat kita? Haa. Uh. Betul. So they carry this burden, they carry this responsibility. Padahal keluarga merupakan that safe space for you. You know what I mean? Sepatutnya. And this is what we're trying, you know, a lot of people, let me tell you, sepatutnya during this pandemic of COVID-19, ramai teens um, reach out to Miasa for help. And it's so sad because yeah. remaja yang reach out umur 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, mereka ni semua dah dalam keadaan yang severe. They are already facing extreme anxiety, anxiety, anxiousness, uh, you know, getting panic attacks in school, not wanting to yeah. go to school. Sebab yelah dia dah dalam keadaan begitu, macam mana nak pergi sekolah, nak berfungsi, bangun betul. tidur, susah, betul? Yeah. Starting to isolate themselves, self-harming, yes. Having suicidal thoughts, having suicidal ideation as well. Yeah. Jadi sebab tu perbincangan ni sangat penting and I'm always very, very happy when, you know, public figures come out and talk about it openly because you guys can reach more people, kan? I can mm. say the same thing but it's different when you guys say it because you guys can reach so many people and it's more impactful and people listen to you, kan? Macam contohlah bila kita kecil-kecil, mak bagi tahu benda, satu benda bila selebriti tu bagi tahu kita dengar, ah, mak tengok mm. dia ni cakap macam ni, it's different, right? Oh, yelah. It's more impactful when you guys say it though. So thank impressionable. you so much. Impressionable, impressionable, kan? Oh, betul. But we just, look at, we just look at somebody like Robin Williams, ya? Yeah? Betul. Comedian. Mm-hmm. You make me laugh so many times, betul tak? Yes, betul. Tengok balik filem dia, kan? Mrs. Betul. Doubtfire lah, whatever lah. He, he made us laugh so much. But inside, he was crying, you know, yeah. by himself. Never realizing that he was struggling. You know? And I, when you read his book and his history, I have it here. You will understand, dari mana datanya? Dari kecil lagi. 
Betul. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sarima um, and Jana. Okay, so I will go to the questions. Sudah 11.22 ni, guys. Um, uh -uh, itulah, soalan pun banyak ni. So, I'll just go one by one. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is more of a general question. So, siapa-siapa pun boleh take it up. Um, can you share some side effects of medication? So mungkin Jana yang baru ambil ubat ni Jana. Kan Jana tengah cuba tukar. Okay, maybe Jana boleh kongsi kenapa Jana tukar-tukar ubat and what are some of the side eff side effects yang Jana experience and why is it difficult sebenarnya? Kenapa susah bila ada side effects ni sebenarnya? Okay, um, sebab saya dah tukar ubat empat kali. So uh. ubat yang pertama uh, untuk saya dia sangatlah best untuk saya punya brain. Dia buat kita okay. rasa sangat sangat betul, saya rasa ubat tu yang paling bagus untuk brain saya <laughs> tapi dia sangat tak bagus untuk kerja satu lagi antara efek ubat-ubat dia adalah uh, saya tak tahu ubat orang lain macam mana tapi ubat saya mostly um, dia akan buat kita mengantuk the whole day sangat-sangat yep. mata ubat yang paling bagus tu untuk saya tu yang tu yang pertama tu paling bagus tapi dia buat saya mata jadi dark circle um, Uh, ngantuk memang memang ngantuk saya dekat set pun saya letak saya tak letak kepala lah kat je saya terus tidur yang tidur dia bukan yang macam bukan tidur yang macam ngantuk biasa tak dia memang kalau tidur terus pingsan terus ha, right. betul ha. and then uh, dari segi emosi uh, kita punya emotion dia memang tak ada tak ada tak ada emosi langsung saya jadi sangat sangat lah saya jadi sangat sangat baik <laughs> saya cakap macam Hai. Hai. Hmm. <laughs> Betul. Macam numb, numb. Ah, ha, ha, dia macam tu. Hai. Orang cakap pun macam oh. Tak adalah Kalau suara. Kalau orang maki pun macam ah, okey okey, dia okey dia. Ha. Dia bukan dia bukan buat kita jadi high macam Betul. macam ah uh, macam ambil dia relax sebenarnya. Tapi dia relax kan kita. Dia relax kita. Saya kena nangis, sin kena nangis. Jenuh nak paksa nangis, tak keluar nangis And then keluar air mata, rasa sedih tu sampai satu saat je Lepas tu hilang, tak ada dah Aduh. Dia sangat pressure untuk kerja saya, betul, ubat yang pertama mm -mm. Ubat yang kedua pula saya dapat adalah Ubat tu pula, efek dia Dia terlalu, dia buat yang saya rasa pening teramat-amat sampai tak boleh bangun Oh. Pening teramat-amat sampai Eh kenapa macam ni, tengah tidur pun pening Maksudnya tengah baring tu pun dia berpusing-pusing. So so kalau kalau siapa-siapa yang pergi dapat rawatan and dapat ubat yang tak sesuai pergi tanya doktor, tanya oh ubat ni tak tak sesuai dengan saya. Uh, jangan macam oh mungkin ni efek dia kot. <laughs> jangan macam 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 confident je ni ni lah ubat dia pergi bawa balik ubat tu doktor bagi je tukar. Lepas tu kalau yang next pula I tukar lagi yang lain yang tu okey sikit tapi dia Ya, yang tu okey sikit. Cuma dia tak bagus sangat untuk brain eye. I. Lah, I still have saya. I still have the inner thoughts, ada ada voices in my head. Uh, so yang paling bagus tu, yang paling tak bagus lagi untuk kerja untuk kerja saya. Betul. Faham tak? Ah, oh, no, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you Jana. Um this is a very good question actually. This was supposed to be the next question. Jadi mungkin saya boleh terus tanya. Uh, may each of you share one simple self care routine that you do every day to manage your mental health. So seperti yang kita tahu, managing mental health is an everyday job. Jadi mungkin kita boleh mula dengan Chip Wan, Carl, dan kemudian Jana lah. One simple self care routine that you do every single day, uh, Chip Wan. Every day when my daughter goes to sleep. For dia punya naps kejap, I put on my workout gear, I go downstairs uh, near the compound, I put on my my music and I just run, walk, run, walk, run and walk. And drink loads and loads of water. Tu je. That's a simple one that I do. Very good, very good. Really helpful as well. Carl? Yeah, every morning, um, I bangun, I can pergi dekat I punya pokok-pokok dulu. And bercakap dengan pokok-pokok. How are you hari ni? Daun nak tumbuh ke? <laughs> oh, yes. Because it's therapy. So good. Yes. Uh, dulu, I selalu, dengan, I selalu dengan my mum bercakap dengan pokok-pokok dia. Dan I rasa macam, apa mak ni bercakap dengan pokok kan? Macam, <laughs> yeah, that end up, kita nampak dia punya kesuburan dia macam mana. So, yeah, I practice that now. So, 
um, kita akan rasa satu, of course kita happy tengok kita punya pokok tu dia punya grow macam mana kan. So every day kita nampak progress dan in the same time, yes, kita bercakap dengan dia juga release kita punya apa-apa yang kita rasa macam you know, berat dan sebagainya. Thank you, thank cool. you very much Carl. Yeah, very very cool. Um, Jannah silakan. Macam saya, sebab saya memang kena bekerja. Saya punya brain memang dia suka bekerja. So, saya <laughs> Dia sampai tengah tidur pun dia akan bekerja juga So apa yang saya buat adalah saya translate apa semua yang in the voice saya into a script lah yes. hmm. So you do that every day? Uh, dia selalu ada hari-hari Tapi I, kalau saya tak buat pun saya akan cakap apa yang dia fikir Saya akan hmm. voice out lah instead of dia lingering inside betul. my head betul. So saya yeah. cakap lah dengan orang apa yang saya fikir Hmm, betul, very very good. Thank you very much everyone. Um, okay, soalan seterusnya. Um, macam mana, okay, macam mana Jana kawal perasaan kalau ianya datang? Jadi mungkin perasaan yang tak best tu lah, negatif ataupun emptiness, overthinking dan sebagainya. So macam mana Jana kawal dan seperti kita tahu ya, uh, Jana bipolar ni kan dia punya mood swings tu kan as well. Um, jadi mungkin um, Jana boleh kongsi sedikit apa yang Jana lakukan sebenarnya. Bila bila saya dalam keadaan kritikal, saya akan jadi jahat dengan orang yang saya sayang. Hmm. Orang yang dekat-dekat. Tapi bukan jahat-jahat macam, maksud, maksud jahat tu adalah kita tak sedar yang kita ni sebenarnya jadi kasar dengan orang tu. Sebab kita dah tak fikir perasaan orang tu kan. So cara saya, cara saya dari dulu adalah kalau saya tak boleh ada dalam situasi itu, saya tak akan ada dalam situasi, dalam situasi itu. Saya akan pergi. Saya akan drive lah mana-mana pergi jauh. I tahu ada orang akan rasa macam, eh lagi bahaya kalau dia pergi jauh-jauh. Tapi untuk 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 saya, untuk saya punya for my own mental mental health adalah tolonglah jangan 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 kacau aku biar aku pergi jauh-jauh sikit. Ha, macam tu. Biar I pergi relax, tenang sebab sebab kalau saya tak nak ada dalam situasi itu, saya tak nak ada dalam situasi itu. Itu masalah saya. Ah, yeah. So orang keliling kena orang sekeliling kena faham yang jangan force orang tu bila dia tak nak ada kat situ. Hmm. So you scared that you say the thing you regret kan, Jana? Mm-mm. Kan takut tercakap benda yang kita regret nanti. Betul. Sebab yeah. kita dalam keadaan tu kita dah tak pakai kita dah cakap tak berfikir tau. Kita hmm. Sebab tu, saya, sebab tu dia better jangan ada siapa-siapa lah. Sebab dia takut sakit ke hati orang. Kan? Well, well yeah. Jana, it happened to me juga. Uh, macam masa awal-awal dulu, uh, let's say kalau orang uh, yang tahu saya punya situation, mostly my family and my good friend yang akan tanya, uh, macam mana are you okay hari ini? Benda tu kan, question tu yang paling saya tak suka. You know? Hmm. Dia macam benda tu yang akan membuatkan sometimes, dia akan trigger untuk kita Bagi jadi. Bagi teruk. Uh, kata, ok kita hari ni, ok kita, you know, um, apa apa nak buat hari ni, jom kita pergi, you know Dia nampak terlalu concern pasal kita <laughs> tak nak Pressure, tahu. pressure uh, so, so benda tu yang, you know, um, orang dekat sekeliling pun kena tahu dan juga kena uh, aware lah ya. Contoh yang mungkin saya boleh bagi suggestion uh, Di mana um, kawan saya yang dia pun dia tahu macam mana nak buat So dia tak tanya, dia macam, jom pergi makan, dia just tarik je, you know Uh, hmm. So, dia distract right. dengan cara kita buat aktiviti lain yang mungkin um, kita nampak kita dah pergi, dah menyorok dalam bilik dan sebagainya. Uh, dia terus bawa. You know? yes. Masa tu belum COVID lagi. So, uh, ada my friend yang bawa I pergi Melaka lah, bawa pergi. You know, just day trip. Yeah. Uh, yang, yang yang mungkin boleh distract kita dan juga buatkan kita. Keep your positive. mind occupied dengan benda yang positif sikit lah. Yeah. Tapi tak yeah. memaksa, tak ada pressure, tak suruh you berfikir kan pasal uh, benda tu. Yes, yes. So ya, yeah, kalau boleh sesiapa yang tengok ni, kalau ada family ataupun you know um, uh, orang rapat you yang ada uh, keadaan macam tu, uh, in, in, uh, instead of you pergi tanya you okay ke apa ke, just buat je benda-benda yang mungkin boleh distract dia punya pemikiran. Kalau kalau tanya I Puan Anita mm-hmm. uh, untuk mungkin soalan ni ditujukan uh, ditanya oleh orang yang mungkin ada family members dia yang dia nak dia nak tolong kan dia tak tahu macam mana kan uh, um, just be there be there um, yes hug, I... hug, hug them jangan jangan question jangan tanya jangan 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 uh, share your own experience it's not the same 
Betul. Kalau boleh cakap macam, no. oh itu lagi lah macam. macam Everyone's kenapa, life kenapa is different. Kenapa kau sedih? Yes. Kalau kau tahu tak dulu aku pernah lagi teruk rasa macam, ah kau jangan macam tu. Betul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dialog yeah. kau per, aku pernah lagi teruk is quite perik eh, kan? Betul. Memang yeah. rasa macam, eh kau belah boleh tak? <laughs> macam tu. Uh, so, Tolong lah, jangan, jangan, jangan cakap apa-apa. Just be there, listen to her. They just Betul. they just need someone to listen and be there. That's all. Yes. Okay, bila Betul. dia dah start open up sebab sebab orang macam kita ni nak open up susah sangat. Ha. So bila kita dah open up, kau jangan cut, don't cut them off. Yeah. And be yes. little dia punya experience macam why are you like that? You should be happy. You should should. Perkataan ha. should ni memang itu yang buat kita rasa macam ya, yeah, aku sebab tu aku rasa bila apa-apa jadi baik aku pergi mana-mana seorang-seorang je sebab takkan dia orang faham. Ya. Yeah. But that's why we seek out professionals because the people around us sebenarnya dia orang susah nak duduk dan mendengar agak susah untuk dia orang terima bila dia tengok kita suffering juga. Tapi uh, most of them saya rasa dia lebih rasa macam nak jadi superhero, penyelamat yang you know. Betul. Yang yang, yang, yang I think what, what is important lah. is um, sebab di Miasa kita juga banyak berbincang ya dengan ahli keluarga Caregiver. dan sahabat ya kai caregivers dan actually many and most of them feel very helpless dia orang tidak faham penyakit mental of course orang ilmu jadi mereka punya niat nak membantu tetapi mereka they don't tak realize faham. that uh, they don't realize yang cara dia orang membantu tu sebenarnya memburukkan lagi keadaan jadi sebab tu kita juga sebagai seorang yang pernah normal dulu untuk memberikan peluang dan ruang untuk mereka juga. Jadi uh, kalau kita boleh berkongsi, it will really help to provide the insights is very very helpful. And you know in Miasa what we always try to say to the caregivers adalah do not advise, use short sentences. And macam Jana cakap tadi betul, be there and support. Kalau kita tak faham, kalau kita kurang ilmu, kita belajar. Kalau kita tak ada waktu untuk belajar, kita um, support in other ways. Jadi macam Carl cakap tadi, uh, bawa pergi mana-mana, pergi beli makan untuk kita ke, do other things to help support. Dan um, just by saying to the person, ataupun just by being there for the person, dan tak payah, tak perlu berkata apa-apa, sudah cukup dan sangat membantu sebenarnya. And I, you know, I really concur Jana dengan you. Hugs, very helpful guys. So kalau kita boleh, you know, touch and hugs are very, very helpful. Dan dalam zaman SOP ni susah. Tetapi kalau kita... Yang halal ya. <laughs> duduk dalam uh, keluarga. Jangan jadikan okay. alasan. I'm sorry I had to hug her because I'm feeling it right now. So come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so this is uh, very, very important. And of course, to validate um, the experience and the emotions, the struggles of the person. Macam Jana cakap tadi, bila kita berkongsi, orang tu pula yang lebih-lebih-lebih nak berkongsi. Don't do this guys, okay? Listen with empathy, listen with compassion and kindness. Listen to understand, not to judge and not to advise. Okay, ni sangat-sangat penting sebenarnya. Thank you so much everyone. Dah 11.35, so I would really need to go to the last question. Okay, Sarima, um, Cik Puan, Carl dan juga Jannah. Seperti biasa, dalam apa jua program yang kami lakukan, we want to provide a message of hope. Kita nak memberikan kata-kata harapan, kita nak memberikan uh, orang jalan keluar ya, insyaAllah. Jadi mungkin Cik Puan boleh mula, um, maybe if you can share a message of hope uh, to those that are struggling or even to to the caregivers, uh, insyaAllah. Okay, well I just want to close it by saying we are all human beings, doesn't matter what job we have, Famous ke tak famous, kaya ke tak kaya, whatever it is, we all have life experiences. And your life experiences are different to mine and mine to yours. So we cannot compare each other's experiences and we cannot assume. So if you want to understand somebody who has a mental health condition, bertanya soalan. Jangan menganggap, ya? Jangan menganggap bahawa kita faham, bahawa kita, kita you know, understand orang tu uh, until we've actually talked to them properly, understood their story. Um, I believe that reaching out is great, but be careful who you reach out to. Make sure yes. there are people you trust, um, yes. and what you what you express about yourself. You know, um, take care of yourself and your privacy. Reach out, but but also be careful with yourself. You know, value yourself. You know, not everybody deserves to hear your story. That's what I always say. Uh, not everybody deserves to know your pain. So know the right people to speak to and there's no shame there's no shame and you can That's feel great. i'm like the happiest like looking person in the world like 
I, I'm like the Disney Channel host, okay? It wasn't supposed to happen to me. I was not supposed to feel like I was at the end of my life. But yep. it happened. So yep. it can happen to anyone. So don't exactly. judge. There is hope. Reach out. Yes, thank you very much, Shipwan. And thank you very much for always you know, sharing and for advocating uh, for this cause. Truly appreciate it. Uh, Carl, silakan. Um, yeah, shout out to semua yang dah pun um, sedar apa rawatan yang perlu dan juga pergi pergi mendapatkan rawatan untuk untuk uh, for a better life, uh, untuk future yang lebih baik. Um, yes, and shout out juga untuk um, semua doktor-doktor, terapis yang membantu sesiapa sahaja yang mempunyai masalah sebelum ni. Um, dan yes, um, jangan risau, jangan rasa um, um, apa kita dah uh, di, di, di penghujungnya. No, you know. Um, anggap je uh, situasi yang kita ada ni mungkin setiap orang perlukan. Um, um, macam mana Jana selalu buat tadi, reset. Kita nak reset. So, ini Betul. adalah uh, journey untuk kita reset. Kita menjadi better few, uh, person yep. in the future. Dan juga, of course, kita mengharapkan kita akan ada uh, better life uh, nanti. So, yes. Um, kalau um, malu, Miasa ada. Boleh datang ke Miasa dan juga bercerita. Please, Ramai okay. kan terapis dekat sana yang nak membantu. And don't worry, tak ada siapa-siapa yang akan judge awak anda ke luar sana. Um, dan yes, um, keluarga, caretaker, sesiapa lah yang ada di sekeliling, um, sayangilah orang yang, yang ada dengan kita tu, okay? Ini mungkin momen dia, kita tak tahu, satu masa nanti mungkin kita pula yang akan menghadapi situasi yang sama. So okay. yes, support, uh, support each other. Thank you. So, Thank you very much, Carl. No problem. Silakan, Jana. Um, okay, uh, saya memang betul-betul nak tackle the root of the problem. <laughs> Sebab saya rasa uh, mental illness ni is actually a cycle. So pada saya kalau kalau untuk berkeluarga tu tolonglah pastikan yang anda betul-betul bersedia untuk ada anak-anak uh, dan pastikan uh, anak-anak tu mendapat kehidupan yang cukup dari segi kewangan dan sebagainya. Ada cukup perhatian terhadap anak-anak tu. Sebab anak-anak ni yang satu hari akan menjadi satu generasi, next, genera- next generation yang akan menjadi uh, orang yang uh, orang yang seterusnya untuk ada sebuah keluarga pula. So, so itu yang so, itu yang menyebabkan kita punya uh, masyarakat ni uh, lebih memahami kan, uh, le- uh, le- hmm. lebih 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 berjaya untuk menjadikan se- sebuah masyarakat yang berjaya, sukses dan sebagainya adalah kenalah uh, daripada lahiriah dia tu lahirnya lahir lahirnya anak tu didiklah dengan penuh cara yang elok uh, um, um, uh, jangan kasar bagi tahu benda elok bagi cukup pendidikan sebab saya memang sangat sangat kesian dengan anak-anak yang tak cukup serba kekurangan so so jangan jangan expect seseorang tu jadi bagus tanpa bagusnya uh, kita punya corak tu. Betul. Uh, Terima kasih so, banyak. Itu je lah. Thank you very much, um, Jana. Okay, so we have come to the end of the session. Uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much everyone for tuning in. Uh, we really hope, you know, I really sincerely hope that it was a beneficial session. Semoga bermanfaat buat semua. Ya, bermanfaat buat saya sudah tentunya seperti biasa. Semua sesi yang kita lakukan memang sangat bermanfaat. Alhamdulillah. So, I just want to uh, end it with saying those of you that are struggling, there is a way out. Okay, you are not alone. Mungkin kita berada dalam saat dan fasa di mana kita nampak jalan tu gelap gelita. Kita tidak nampak jalan keluar. But I promise you, insya Allah, hearing from all of us, jalan keluar itu ada, pertolongan itu ada. Anda boleh sembuh. You can recover. Treatments yes, are available. Can. Treatments Puan, are available. Uh, Puan Rita, saya ada tambahan. Okay. Ha, boleh. Dia, dia fikirkan balik. Sebenarnya... Sebenarnya anak-anak yang anak-anak yang uh, dari dari keluarga yang tidak sempurna adalah anak-anak yang kuat. Betul. So, so jangan pernah rasakan ketidaksempurnaan itu membuatkan anda lemah. Tapi sebaliknya ketidaksempurnaan itu yang akan menjadikan kita anak-anak uh, orang uh, manusia yang berbeza di masa Betul. akan datang. 
So anggaplah segala ujian yang ada sekarang ni Allah bagi kat kita ni akan menjadikan kita orang yang lebih kuat daripada orang lain. Uh, ini adalah positif saya yang saya rasa saya pegang lah mungkin. Ujian yang Allah bagi ni sebab kita mampu. Kalau kita tak mampu Allah oh. tak akan bagi. Oh it's true Jana, I totally agree. Very very true. Only only through adversity do you know your strength. Yes, Kalau semua definitely. senang kita tak tahu ke definitely. apa ke ketabahan kita. Kita jadi manusia yang average lah yang Betul, betul. And you know Jana, I, I always say kan that hanya dengan Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala memberikan saya penyakit ni, saya belajar tentang empathy, saya belajar tentang kesusahan Betul. dan kepayahan orang lain. Kalau Betul. kalaulah saya tak ada penyakit mental Jana, saya saya hampir boleh garanti yang apa yang Jana kongsikan tentang kesusahan tadi saya tak boleh relate sebenarnya. Betul. Betul kan? Macam yes. Betul. <laughs> Betul. Yeah. Benda tu tak relevan sebenarnya kepada kita dan kita tak dapat rasa tapi bila Jana bagi tahu je aspek tu saya nak menangis sebenarnya because I can totally relate, we can feel it kan Carl dengan yeah. Jepun yeah. because now we know sebenarnya look you know Allah nak ambil sesaat je dia ambil terus tak boleh berfungsi cerita dia that's right, done, exactly. finish without betul. our thoughts and health betul. but the message of hope is this guys for those of you that are watching kalau anda ada penyakit mental let me tell you one thing you can thrive in this journey Do not think that with a mental health condition you can't recover. Do not think that you cannot be a better person because you can and you will, inshallah. Okay, so take it from all of us. I hope you feel inspired by the stories of Chipwan, Carl Shafri, dan juga Jana Nick. And I want all of us to understand that we all have a role to play, and we can make this world a better, a safer world for the future generation and the generations that follow. Inshallah. Dan saya juga nak mengambil peluang, guys, uh, because of the whole pandemic of COVID-19 dengan the rocketing numbers of, um, you know, COVID-19. Kita dah banyak kehilangan orang yang tersayang. I urge everyone, please adhere to SOPs, guys. Please help us to break this chain of COVID-19 and flatten the curve. We all have a role to play. Dan juga a shout out to all semua wira wirawati petugas barisan hadapan. Terima kasih yang tidak terhingga. Thank you so much for all that you guys are doing. Putting yourselves in harm's way. Tak dapat berjumpa dengan keluarga dan sebagainya. Allah sahaja yang dapat membalas segala jasa-jasa anda. Thank you so much. And we are all in this together. Our prayers, our hearts are with you. Thank you so much. And Malaysia, let's do let's do better guys. InsyaAllah. Okay, thank you so much everyone. Thank you, Marita. Thank you, thank you, Sabrina. Bye, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Take care. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Okay.